Hey guys, Drudder here. It's the 26th of June 2013 and this video is going to be about silver and uh, related topics such as demand and the recent price action. So I'll start off with the chart here and this is the weekly chart. Each bar is one week and it goes back to September 2012 which was the announcement of QE3 to infinity. And as you can see, uh, we've gone from about 35 to around 18, uh, lost approximately 50% of its value since the Federal Reserve announced that it was going to print 7 billion US dollars every month. And as we like to joke in Billion Bugs, the chat room on PalTalk sometimes, um, if only the Federal Reserve was conjuring gold and silver bullion out of thin air, like they're conjuring dollars out of thin air, um, this chart would be looking exactly the opposite as it is now. That doesn't make any sense, of course. Um, you can't conjure gold and silver bullion out of thin air. And if you did, if you were able to, it certainly wouldn't uh, increase the value of gold and silver bullion. People would immediately say, my God, you're making gold and silver bullion from nothing? The value would drop through the floor. So it's as almost as though they had said we were going to conjure gold and silver bullion out of thin air, when really they said we're going to conjure US dollars out of thin air. So the chart's not doing what you would expect it to do, but that's normal for silver and gold. Um, as people who watch this channel know, the price of silver and gold, at least the spot price of electronic silver and gold, is controlled by a very small group of people, uh, some powerful banks, some powerful investors, and uh, some powerful elite people who can essentially make the chart do whatever they want. And this is what it's doing now. It's gone from 35 when they announced devaluing the dollar to pretty much half that price now and as Endless Mountain said recently today in his video he expects it to hit 17 or 17.50 perhaps as early as tomorrow or Friday um, and uh, I don't disagree with that this it looks like that's what's happening it really does this is unprecedented moves almost nothing uh, moves the way silver has moved over the past couple of years this is just it's incredible um, I'm surprised you don't see more stories about it in the mainstream media saying, can you believe that this has happened? Um, when, is ever, when does ever anything go down from 50 to 18, <laughs> especially a physical commodity, um, in such a tiny short time frame? But uh, that's what's happened. And this, uh, it's interesting to see, and I'm going to keep following along with it. But I don't want to go too long on this chart. I want to move over to a different chart here. There we go, that is the logarithmic 10-year chart in silver. And it follows um, from about, let's see what's the price here, $4 to $50 and now back down to 18 And uh, just a reminder, logarithmic charts are charts that track the percentage move in something. So if something has had large volatile swings, it's really much more useful to analyze that. Um, instead of looking at a nominal chart, which is something that is just uh, like the chart before that I was showing you, just simply uh, keeping track of dollar moves. So, of course, a dollar move when you're at $10 an ounce is larger than a dollar move when you're at $50 an ounce. So logarithmic is much more useful for looking at things that have um, gone up and down in large amounts, and this certainly has. So we've gone from 4 to 50 and back to 18. And you can see that there is a general sort of excuse that crosshairs there that moves but a general um, slope up I won't try and draw any trend lines or anything on this but I think you can see that silver has been sort of tracking along with inflation and uh, at times it is sort of above or below the uh, the median above or below the median above or below above or below so it does um, doesn't track a perfect straight line, but it has been going at least over the past 10 years sort of in a predictable direction. I just thought it was a useful chart to have a look at from time to time. Let's have a look at the demand side of things. As the US Mint updated yesterday, that was the 25th, showing 3.275 million ounces so far this month. And uh, quickly before I get into that, I was contacted by somebody recently and sort of um, I don't know, chided, I guess. They they told me that they believed that I might be attempting to mislead people or uh, something like that by claiming that um, silver investment demand is the same thing as overall silver demand. And of course it isn't because there's other things in there like industrial silver. In fact, industrial silver accounts for approximately half or even more of the demand for silver bullion. So 
no investment demand, such as shown here by uh, looking at Silver Eagle demand, which is very representative of bullion demand, isn't necessarily the same thing as overall demand. And I have mentioned that many times in the past when I do these videos on this topic, um, but I don't mention it every time because it's sort of time consuming to go over it. Uh, but no, the, we are looking at only investment demand of silver. So um, the divergence chart that we talk about and that we look at is tracking the demand for silver investment products such as eagles and not overall demand for silver bullion. So going off these numbers here we have 3.275 million so far in June. Multiply that by 30 days in the month and divide by the day that that figure came out which was the 25th and it shows that we will end up in June with approximately 3.9 million ounces. And that is what we were expecting and what we were tracking all the way through. Um, there are 5,000 ounces from May, of course, in these June numbers, and missing from the May numbers in order to um, for the Mint to not post a record May. But uh, as I've shown many times, we have had a record January, uh, April, and other months in the year as well, and it looks like June is also going to be a record. We're at about 3.3 now, and uh, a few more days left to go until the end of the month, and it looks like it may end up about 3.9. That is, if they bother to update it before the end of the month, what I think they may do is just let this number float and not bother updating um, for several days, maybe not even until next week. And then in July, you'll see like a big number, like 600,000 appear here suddenly on July 1st. Um, that's just how they roll. But um, overall, it's kind of hard to hide the fact that we are experiencing record numbers, even if um, 3.2 or 3.3 is the final number for June. Have a look back, that is roughly the same as May. Uh, slightly less than April, roughly the same as March and February, and only February was higher as it is at the highest month every year, just because a lot of um, big investors and funds and stuff buy right at the beginning of the year, um, and that's why January always looks so big. But yeah, we have had a record, um, record year so far. In fact, let's go over here and have a look at this. High tech charts, I know. Uh, this is the demand or sales by year going back from 2000 all the way till now and as you can see here we have about 48% of 2013 done, 48 or 49 as of today. And this is the 25 million number here um, that we just reached and uh, that's so this grayish blue bar here is um, 2013 so far and as you can see it has now beat 2008 and of course everything before 2007 and uh, everything before 2000 as well it was all quite uh, quite low back in the 1990s and 80s um, but yeah these are the record four years so far 2008 2009, 2010, 2011 was the peak and of course 2012 when the price came down so did demand and now in 2013 we are already almost approaching this 2009 total and it won't be much longer maybe two months before it beats both 2010 and 2012 leaving it the entire rest of the year just to make up a little tiny bit more and beat 2011 which it absolutely is going to do um, as you can see here, these two different colored bars are my estimates for 2013, where we're going to end up. This is conservative estimate here, and this is the higher end estimate here. So I'm predicting somewhere around 50 to 55 million ounces of Silver Eagles sold this year, well above the old record of 2011, just showing you where that divergence is coming in. Someone linked me to this today, thank you. This is um, David Morgan's interview on Silver Investing News. I don't know much about this website personally, silverinvestingnews.com, um, but there is an interview here with David Morgan. It took place very recently and the article was just posted today. Uh, they discuss the divergence between price and demand for silver bullion and uh, go over a little bit about um, what it may mean. Uh, David Morgan offers some of his insights. He's been investing and looking at silver bullion for, uh, I believe, almost 40 years. Don't quote me on that exactly, but um, he recently contacted me on YouTube and thanked me for my videos, and uh, I have subscribed to him, and I'll put his channel down below. It's Silver Guru. Um, pretty easy to remember, but I'll put the link down below, and you can join his channel if you aren't already. Uh, he does, I think he does a paid newsletter as well as a... Um, 
a free newsletter as well. I'm, I'm not really a newsletter kind of person, but um, a lot of people are, so check that out if you're interested. And check out this link to the article and the interview. Um, pretty good stuff, and I appreciated hearing his take on it. Thank you, David. Lastly, I have a couple of links here from a dear friend of mine in Australia. She knows who she is. Thank you for these links. And uh, I guess she's really on top of the medical stuff that's going on right now because she keeps sending me links about different stuff that's going on in terms of research with uh, nanoparticles of gold and silver. So there's one here that's um, proof that silver makes antibiotics thousands of times more effective. And uh, it's it's kind of half layman's terms, half medical jargon, but it's, it's fairly understandable. So um, I think anyone would really get something out of that article if they're interested in this topic. And this one here is about uh, gold. They put tiny, tiny gold bars, <laughs> um, little rods of gold bullion, essentially, into your blood. And this um, is coated with something called the F protein, which is a protein that's found on the surface of RSV, which is a really terrible virus that uh, afflicts humans and kills several thousand people per year and infects about 65 million people a year. Um, it's a respiratory infection. Anyhow, these tiny rods mimic the uh, virus because they have the, these F proteins on the surface of the rods and your body believes it's a virus and it learns how to fight against this virus. Um, so there's no damage to your body, you're just injecting little tiny bits of gold with proteins on the outside and there's no chance of getting sick like there is with another vaccine. There's no thermosil or mercury or any of that crap because gold doesn't need you know, it doesn't need to be uh, preserved. Gold preserves itself. And uh, so gold and silver are making, you know, huge, huge leaps and bounds in the medical world. Um, so there always is that medical demand that looks like it's going to be there in the future for um, precious metals because they are, they just have so many unique properties that nothing else has. And uh, we're learning more and more about it. It's really interesting. Um, but uh, really, that's all I wanted to say for this video, so I'll talk to you guys soon.